If I were smart, I would just sit down after so many nice things have been said. <laughs> if I were smart, I probably wouldn't run for Congress to begin with. <laughs> what dear friends and wonderful, wonderful people. Thank you. All of you, though I don't know you as well, I'm sure by your involvement in this are of comparable, comparable compassion and commitment and fortitude. Uh, I feel kind of far away. It, it looks farther from down there than it does up here. I, uh, I'm not used to that. It, but I guess I'm used to being far away from groups, but <laughs> not when I'm among friends. Um, what I thought I might do is, is just share a couple of uh, perspectives and then maybe ha take just a couple of questions. Uh, you know, I, uh, Craig and Cindy are such special people, and their daughter, Rachel, was a force of nature, just one of those rare young people who, uh, who we actually have, she was unique, but there are actually many like her out there. Uh, uh, when you read her writings and you know her personal story, uh, I remember, I will never forget, uh, I was, you know, we're always racing to boats, it seems like. And as I'm racing, a few minutes left on the clock, there's this woman in my front office, and, and she says, have you got just a minute? And I really didn't. Uh, she was rather, I did, kind of recognized her, but wasn't sure where from. She looked kind of frail. She's very modest and quiet. And she said, I just have to talk to you about something very important. My daughter is in Palestine with the International Solidarity Movement. They're trying to protect houses from being bulldozed. And we've been getting e uh, emails and phone calls saying that it's getting very dangerous. The Israelis are shooting closer to them. The bulldozers are getting closer. Can you do something? And, and I, I said, I don't think there's anything I can do. She's in a very dangerous position. And then I said, because I believe this, I hope and trust that your daughter would do the same thing and put herself in harm's way if she knew an Israeli bus was about to get bombed by a suicide bomber. And Cindy said, I'm sure she would. She put herself right in the way of that bomb. And I said, ma'am, there's just no way I'll be able to call our State Department and they'll call the Israeli government and they'll call off the bulldozers at a moment's notice. It just can't happen. I wish it could, but I can't do it. And please urge your daughter to be very, very careful because I think things are escalating. Well, about what, three or four days later, not long, uh, I had gone back home, and I had a wonderful Northwest day. I climbed Mount St. Helens solo, uh, came back down, was exhausted from the climb, and the phone rang, and it happened to be the daughter of my former representative, Jolene Unsold, who was a passionate, progressive member. She would probably say liberal member of Congress. Uh, uh, and there was this terrible news. The daughter, of Jolene, was saying, one of your constituents has been killed in Gaza, and, and I just... We knew immediately who that had to be, and, and thus uh, we began a long process of trying to seek some justice for Rachel and provide support for Craig and Cindy and their family, and uh, a, a struggle that they continue to this day, as you, as you may know, some of you, they've been in, and they're in the middle of a trial uh, in, in uh, Israel to try to seek justice for that, and we continue to provide as much support as we can. More recently, uh, during Operation Cast Lead, uh, which I hate, I hate these names, you know, Operation Cast Lead. It sounds like a miniseries. It was everything but a miniseries. It was a horrible, catastrophic destruction of the civilian population. But uh, many of us were deeply concerned about what was going on, and there was a movie, or a photo, I think, in the New York Times, it went worldwide, the one that you saw that I displayed on the floor of the house, and here are these three lovely young children. They could easily have been my own sons. And there in the background is that just grief-stricken father, as I know Craig and Cindy must have felt when they got word about Rachel. And I thought, we've got to do something about this. Uh, we cannot be in silence. And I also knew that inevitably in the Congress there would be a resolution com commending or at least condoning those operations. So. It turned out I was invited to speak at a U.S. Islam conference in uh, Qatar, and my dear friend and colleague Keith Ellison from Minnesota uh, was also invited.
Keith and I found that out. We searched each other out on the floor. And Keith came up to me and said, hey, man, I hear, that's how Keith talks. He said, hey, man, I hear you're, you're going to Qatar. And I said, I am. And he said, what do you say we, and I said, go to Gaza? <laughs> and he said, yeah. And I said, let's go. Uh, you can imagine the State Department didn't want us to go overtly and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. We just insisted we would go. And we went with no security uh, at all because we thought that would get between us and people and we didn't want to do that. And then to their credit, John Kerry and Teresa came later in that same day. Our goal was to bear witness. Our goal was to, to uh, uh, see what had happened. And I should say, by the way, that was not by any means my first trip to the region. I had been to the West Bank on a number of occasions. I had been to Israel on a number of occasions. I had been to the World Economic Forum on the Middle East four or five years running. I uh, had been to Iraq, so I had been to Jordan many times and Egypt a number of times. So I was pretty well versed in what was going on there, but it was so important to be there at that moment in that place. And uh, so Keith and I went in under the aegis of uh, UNRWA and, and visited schools, hospitals, uh, uh, relief centers, etc. And actually at one point we're helping to haul the material because it just seemed like the right thing to do. There are some very powerful images from those visits on our website. Uh, interviews with the, the principal of the American International School and, and striking images of that destruction. Mental health workers in Gaza. I'm a psychologist, as you heard. Mental health workers told stories about how, and it's on the website, but, and they, they're more eloquent than I could be, but they told stories about how young children in Gaza and actually in the West Bank, but this was mostly focusing on Gaza at the time, and I want to make sure we talk about the West Bank as well. But they said, you know, they see this occupation, they see people coming in and kicking in doors, and they see people getting arrested and hauled away, the children do, and they see their own parents lacking jobs, lacking a sense of, uh, or having a sense of powerlessness against this occupation, and the children at a time started looking to the Israelis and saying, I want to be like those guys. They've got the guns, they've got the power. My parents got nothing. What does that do to a whole generation to feel that way about their parents? And then the mental health professional says, but then the children gradually began to say, wait a second, I don't want to be like the occupiers. I want to be a suicide bomber. I want to be a martyr. Psychologists told me, that his eight-year-old son and he were driving down the road when the car in front of him was obliterated and he saw these children, or these people in the car burned up. And about three weeks later he said, Daddy, I, I want to be a suicide bomber. Now this was the child of an educated PhD or their equivalent psychologist. He wasn't taught in the madrasa to be a suicide bomber. He was taught by the school of life. And his father said, why in life for goodness sakes would you want to do that? And the child, eight-year-old child said, because we are all going to get killed anyway. That's the culture that is happening to those children. 600,000 kids under the age of 14. They didn't vote for Hamas for crying out loud. By the way, people did vote for Hamas in an election, which we encouraged them to have. So to then say, well, we're going to collectively punish you all because you had an election which we encouraged you to have is pretty preposterous. But to somehow believe that these 14 these 600,000 kids are going to somehow rise up and overthrow Hamas is absurd. And it is collective punishment. There's no question about it. And so we, Keith and I went repeatedly. The, the first visit was right after Cast Lead. I felt the need to see again. We went again in May. I went again this past February. I'm going again next month, if I'm allowed. I am absolutely convinced that this is a fundamental issue of United States national security. David Petraeus has talked about the challenges this festering conflict imposed on our other efforts in the region. I was in the Swat Valley in Pakistan, an area where we visited a girls' school that had been liberated. And the kids, the girls could now at long last go back to school. But we went to a group of sort of almost a town hall, and this one gentleman stood up and said, you want us to help you fight the Taliban. But we see what you do, Pakistan vis-a-vis -vis India, and we see what you do with Palestine vis-a-vis -vis Israel. Why should we think that you really care about us as Muslims in Pakistan? 